This is a tool I expect a lot of you guys to be familiar with. This is of course lightpollutionmap.info, but there exists a lot of other light pollution data sources out there. And in today's video, we're gonna put them head to head and we're gonna test them with real life data to see which of them is most accurate. I've selected four locations around Copenhagen where I live. We're gonna be testing both inner city, we're gonna head out to the suburbs, we're gonna go out to some more rural areas, and then finally we're gonna go to a actual dark sky location where we're gonna do real life measurements of the night sky, and then we're gonna compare the measured results to what we see on the maps. And of course the first contestant that we're gonna be using is lightpollutionmap.info as it's probably the most used light pollution map out there. But I'm also gonna be using lightpollutionmap.app as you can see here, very similar, does the exact same thing. But I think the data here is a little bit more recent. So I kind of have high hopes that this might actually have some slightly more accurate data maybe, but I don't know, we'll see by the end of this video. And the third contester is clear outside, because as you can see, when you type in, you can type in coordinates here, and then it actually gives us an estimated sky quality here where we can see the magnitude and thereby we can calculate the sky brightness. And uh, I just want to look at that. Look at that beautiful astro weather coming up. <laughs> it's terrible. But anyway, that's going to be our third data source. And for the final, we are going to be jumping into a tool called Sky Tool 4. Uh, actually, a tool I showed you in a previous video. This is quite an advanced tool used for calculating um, and scheduling your astro um, sessions for multiple targets and figuring out how long you need to expose. This tool can do a lot, but what it can also do that's interesting for this video is if we go to setup and locations, when you set up your location, you can set a sky brightness. Either you can type in your own or you can use their built-in data set. So, as this is a quite advanced tool, who knows, maybe they are more accurate than some of the other um, other tools we see. I don't know, we'll see. Now, in order to determine the actual light pollution levels, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using this. This is called a sky quality meter. And it's a quite simple device. There's a small button on it. You press the button and then the lens that sits here on the top measures the actual light pollution. It has relatively good off-axis light rejection as it only measures in a 20 degree cone above it. But we are gonna be trying to reduce that as much as possible because just over here, there is a park. We're gonna head in there, get as far away from this, uh, the street lights as we can. And we're gonna do a measurement from in there to try and get it as accurate as possible. So as you can see, now I'm in the park. You probably can't see anything at all, actually, because it's quite dark in here. And it's really the darkest spot I could find in the city. So let's sit up and let's do our measurement. First measurement, 17.97. We got 17.93 for our second measurement. And the final one was 17.95. Now, as you probably guessed, I'm going to do every measurement at every location three times just to ensure that I have as accurate results as possible and that I don't accidentally get an outlier or something went wrong in one location. I'm going to try to repeat each test three times at each location. But now I need to get back to the car so we can get out of the city and do the second set of measurements in the suburbs. Now for our second stop of the night, we moved out into the suburbs. So we are now just outside the city. And this is just, again, to test how these different tools fare in like these kind of borderline regions where you're not quite in the heavy light pollution in the city, but we're not quite rural just yet. I'm gonna to try to get away from as much of the light as possible. Just over here, there's a small hill. We're gonna climb on top of that and we're gonna to try to uh, take our measurements up there. So we should be away from all the lights and buildings and stuff that's in this area. Okay, here we are. Let's get these lights off and uh, let's do some measurements. Measurement number one is 18.9. Number two is 18.86. And our third measurement is 18.88. 
but the night is still young and we still have a bunch of driving to do because I want to get this done before the moon rises. Ah, okay guys, I'm gonna put you guys up here on the roof of the car. There you go. Um, we made it to um, a small disused airport, small airstrip, uh, just right over here actually. I've been taking some really cool shots from this space. So, you know the procedure by now. We got our light meter and we're gonna go and do our measurements. Let me get this light, turn that off. So we're not polluting our data. And uh, you can't see a thing right now, can you? You can hear it. Gotta press the button. We got 19.88 on the first measurement, 19.85 on the second one, and 19.91 on the last one. Ah, okay, there we go. More light again. Hello, guys. So, one stop left for tonight. Um, it's still getting late, but I think we can just make it before the moon rises, um, which is actually a observatory, but I'm going to show you when we get there. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Borfelde. This place is probably the center for astronomy in Denmark. And the reason why I've come to this place, while not necessarily the darkest in the country, this place is quite dark and definitely would be considered a dark sky area. And it's actually been passed by law that you're not allowed to increase the light pollution in this area. So while the areas around it, light pollution has increased, this has actually stayed relatively consistent. Measurement number one is at 20.79, 20.82, and 20.78. And with our measurements done, it's time for me to go back to the city. I have about an hour's drive to get back, and it's getting quite late, so um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. After a good night's sleep, it's time to look at some data. And uh, first, let's just line up all the measurements that we did. Let's get the measurements up from the individual tools. And it looks like this. Now, we're gonna dive into it in a lot more details, but one observation that I'm making right off the bat is that all the tools seems to be overestimating the um, quality of the sky. That means a higher number means that it's better quality sky means less light. So I measured more light with my sky quality meter than what the tools say. At first, I thought this could be an indication that maybe there was some street lights with some stray lights. And as we saw when I was in the city, we had like the stadium behind me with the floodlights on. Maybe there was some light for those that would give me a poor reading, so a lower number, lower quality, because we got some stray light from that. Now, I specifically got a sky quality meter with pretty good um, stray light pro um, protection. If you notice that even out at the observatory, it still got consistently uh, lower readings when I was using the tool compared to what the online tools were saying. And out there, there were no street light. It was pitch black out there. It was really, really dark. So so there, there was no street light. There was nothing. So we can be pretty sure that wasn't the case out there. And since we see it consistently across all the locations, I think that there could be two explanations. Either all the tools just generally aim too high um, or give the too good quality compared to what it really is in reality. Or alternatively, the tool I got has not been calibrated correctly. It should have been calibrated from the factory and just be ready to go. So it should be accurate. Assuming that my measurements are correct, 
then let's try to see what's the difference, how much off were each of the different tools compared to the uh, actual measurements I did. And that looks something like this. We can see here for the inner city that light pollution map .app get got the best result. It was closest, um, closely followed by light pollution map .info and clear our site with sky tools fall being completely out of whack. And that's actually a pattern we're going to see repeat itself, where even on when we get out into the suburbs, we still see light pollution map pulling ahead with the closest result to my real life measurements, closely followed by light pollution map info. And then with clear outside and sky tools fall kind of lacking a bit behind. Out on the airport, we actually got one of the few locations where the um, where the apps were reporting a lower quality than um, than what I was measuring, but here light pollution map uh, dot app was extremely close. Um, Sky Tool Four actually did a pretty good job in this area too, um, with the largest discrepancy here being for light pollution map dot info. But overall, light pollution map dot app got the uh, got the closest result. And just again for the last one, again light pollution map dot app got the best. Um, result compared to my real life measurements and again you have uh, info and clear off site um, being very close and sky tool fall being just completely just just doesn't even matter <laughs> um, so overall i would say assuming that my measurements are valid that light pollution map dot app gives more accurate results compared to what you get with dot info so I would probably gonna be switching over and begin using light pollution map app a little bit more as it seems to give more accurate uh, data than what we get on light pollution map info. And one final thing, you can also get yourself your own little measurement tool. You can get yourself the emergency gravity detector on my merch store. It will be linked in the description below. So if you're in doubt whether gravity is still in effect, you can always just yeet that thing and see if it still works. <laughs> Check it out along with other t-shirts and other cool stuff and help support the channel a little bit over on deepspacebook.com where I also sell my merchandise. Thanks a lot and uh, clear skies. What this tool does is it allows you to make scientifically accurate calculations with your equipment and based on your sky con And we're starting this list off at number 10 with the ISS Transit Finder. This is a very neat homepage and 